Stop worrying about your slow, clumsy hand that can't keep up with the other. Let's deal with this. This is a method I put every one of my students through and it really does have a 99%, if not 100% success rate. And if you follow these steps, you'll get the same results too. Let's get going. If you have a weak hand, odds are it hasn't just magically gotten stronger throughout your practicing unless you've intentionally worked at it. It's what tends to happen, there's, there's a, like a business principle where you find what's working in your business and you focus on the thing that's working and you, you know, leave behind the things that aren't. Kind of like 80-20 in a way. But that doesn't really work so well with our practicing when we're trying to eliminate a weak hand. We've got to intentionally focus on that weak hand because it's our weakest link. And until we deal with it, it's always gonna be there, always dragging us down. And so we can't just be happy about how fast our right hand can play if our left hand is struggling. So we've gotta get them both up to speed. Don't worry though, because that's what we're gonna do today. No matter where you're at with this, whether your weak hand is your left hand or your right hand, no matter how weak it is, it's going to improve if you work through this. This method always works. That's why I say 99%, if not 100%. You've just gotta put in the effort, but I'll show you how to do it. Step one. Fix the bad habits, be intentional about getting both hands physically looking the same. So kind of a weird thing to play is at the same time, which can actually feel really weird on a drum, the way the drum head reacts. It's kind of like as a kid, like if you and your buddy were jumping on the trampoline together and you both land at the same time, it's kind of weird, you know? So it's the same way on drums. So do this on a pad, do this on a practice pad, playing singles with each hand at the same time and just look at your hands and see what is the difference between what my strong hand is doing, what my weak hand is doing, because sometimes it's not just, the, the issue isn't just that your weak hand is weak, it's that it's not gripping well at all. Like it, it missed that step, it totally just missed that years ago. And so you've gotta make sure that you're off to a good start here, a good foundation, and actually gripping the same way with both hands. That way we know we're, you know, we've leveled the playing field, we know that all we've gotta do is just train the, the weak hand muscle memory wise to do what it's supposed to. So do this over and over again, watching your hands, seeing, okay, what are the differences? What do I need to change here to make sure I'm gripping well? Because remember that we wanna grip loosely, nice and relaxed so the stick is bouncing. Most of the time what I've noticed, and I've been noticing this especially lately in a lot of my one-on-one -on -one students, that if you let the fulcrum actually be your middle finger instead of index finger, that makes it easier to have more rebound because your index finger isn't in the way. Sometimes the index has a tendency to get in the way. So if you grip this way, you can kind of keep it out here on its own. Your fulcrum can really be middle finger with index guiding. I found that tends to be my sweet spot. That tends to work pretty well. And so strive for that, you know, focus on these detailed mechanics, whatever bad habits are happening, get rid of them. Maybe your strong hand isn't exactly gripping loosely either. So you've got to start there. That's okay, it's okay to go back to square one and you know, totally unlearn what you've learned if you're not getting good rebound. You know that you're on track once you can throw the stick down and it bounces right back up effortlessly. Once you can get both hands doing that, then you're actually ready to fix your weak hand. So I say all that because you can't actually fix a weak hand until it's gripping correctly. Then we can talk about strength and, and all of that. So in order to do that, step two, spend three times as much time working on just your left hand as you do your right hand. So maybe you start off your practicing with some singles. Well, spend a lot more time focusing just on the left because the right hand doesn't need as much practice if our goal is to get the left hand caught up. The reason I say three times as much is so that maybe if you're spending five minutes on the right hand, then you spend your next 15 on your left. So it's that 20 minute block. Doesn't matter, it doesn't have to be exact, whatever makes sense for you in your practice time. And now step three, practice right hand lead and left hand lead singles for minutes at a time until they're machine gun even. You wanna be able to play. And those just sound totally smooth, exactly the same. Also left hand lead. With a metronome, that way you're actually feeling that as left hand lead. It's easy to turn it around in your head once you get going. And of course, practice slow doubles and paradiddles also, which can be left hand lead. With paradiddles, you're switching back and forth constantly, which is great. In a way, the paradiddle is a great litmus test for making sure, am I balanced out, am I even? And so once you are, you'll know it, you'll be able to play those paradiddles evenly, but in the meantime, go super slow with them. Notice that this would not be possible without that loose, relaxed rebound. 
So it all starts with that. Be loose, be relaxed, be able to play this with your weak hand. That way you know that you can play. Or that's why we're, we're going through this in steps. You've got to follow these steps. Do this in order. Otherwise, you're going to be in trouble and you're not going to make progress. You're going to get stuck and you're going to be frustrated. So start with the grip and then work specifically on left hand, then work on both hands together, really focusing on doing stuff left hand lead also, balancing it out. Now step four, I wanna give you this really cool exercise. This was something my percussion teacher taught me probably back in my first college percussion lesson. And it really helped to balance out my hands and it's one of those exercises that is kinda of tough. It's, it's kinda of difficult. It, well, it's simple, but it's difficult to play it well. And that's the way so many things are on drums, right? Where it's hard to, to play them really well where they sound really good. It's one thing to just play them, it's another to make it sound good. So what we're gonna do with this exercise, we're gonna play a measure of doubles followed by a measure of singles played as 16th notes, as slow as we need to go. But we're gonna play the doubles like this. So we're just gonna start with right, right, left, left, right, right. So we're offsetting them, which is gonna help us even them out for one thing. If you're trying to even out your doubles, this is a great way to do it. Right, left, left, right, right, left, left, right, right. Because remember, we're going from machine gun even. We don't want to do accents here. Then after a measure of this, we're going to go into singles. So it'll go like this. Right, left, left, right, right, left. Three, E, and a, four, E, and a, singles. Right hand lead singles. Three, E, and a, four, E, and a, one, E, and a, two. Now we're going back into the doubles, but we're leading with the left hand now. One, E, and a, two. Left, 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 left. Now left lead singles, left hand lead singles. 3E e and a 4E e and right, right, left, left, right, right. So it resets every time. I found that this exercise is the toughest when you're playing it kind of slowly and also quietly. Just tough to play stable when you're going that quietly, but quiet playing and slow playing, quiet slow playing leads to control. You've got to build the control there. And so practice this quietly, a little bit louder, slowly, quickly. There's not really a hard and fast tempo. I remember spending a lot of time working it at 90, which is a great tempo, but start off at 70. Like go really slow and gradually work your way up until you're able to go. And actually practicing this on a pad helps expose slight inconsistencies. If you're playing on a snare, sometimes the snare sound and just the, the loudness of all of that can bury slight inconsistencies. But do this on your pad like that because you'll notice when things don't line up exactly, when there's like a slight skip or a hop or a slight inconsistency, the only way to fix that once you get to that tempo is to go really slow again. Agonizingly slow. <laughs> But that's how you get this evened out. That's what I did in my playing. And so doing a bunch of that and practicing a lot of the exercises from stick control where you're doing paradiddles and the paradiddle variations and you're doing or or so many of these patterns that thoroughly work out your brain for one thing, two-way coordination, perfect two-way coordination, but also balancing out your hands, practice things like that. Practice those kinds of exercises and spend as much time as you need to specifically working out that left hand. So that's pretty much it, that's the four steps. But I wanna give you a bonus step, I wanna give you a step five because sometimes it's not that simple and sometimes you can do all of that that I just showed you and you're still having trouble with the left hand and it's still just not working well and it's just not comfortable and things aren't locking together and you've been working on it for years and you feel like you're not making progress. Sometimes that happens, that's just the way it is when you have a hand that you don't use much. And so what I would advise you to do, I did a video about this actually a few years ago. I'll put it in the description so you can check it out. It's one of my older videos. But we talk about using your weak hand more in day-to-day -day life. Open doors with it, pick up and carry things with it. Uh, even try to brush your teeth with your weak hand, try to eat with your weak hand, random things like that. 
that you wouldn't ordinarily do, just to build that brain connection so that your brain is more constantly in contact with that hand that normally hasn't done much. And so in doing that, you'll become a little bit more ambidextrous because as a drummer, you wanna to get to a place where you're literally ambidextrous, maybe except that you write with a particular hand. I write with my left hand, but I can do a lot of other things with my right hand. And much of that is thanks to practicing all of this on the drums and intentionally using my right hand in day-to-day -day life. I even have a habit of grabbing the heavier drum gear when I'm going to and from a gig with my right hand. So do things like that because that really can help. Now, bonus tip number two, practice playing open-handed. Practice playing grooves open-handed, left hand on the hats, right hand moving around. A good example would actually be the don't stop believing groove. That's a great way to play that groove where you just got left hand over here, that way right hand can move around the kit. And if you wanna get crazy, reverse your kit. And actually there's a space where I used to teach lessons where I would have a backwards drum set across the room from the normal drum set so I could mirror a student. And so I would be kind of learning things for the first time along with the student as I'm trying to play it backwards. And so that's helped me a lot too, just keeping time with my left hand and working my left foot on the kick drum. So, hey, if you've got two kits, if you're lucky enough to have two kits and you can set one up backwards to stay that way, by all means do it because that's really gonna help a lot. It's gonna really mess with your brain, but it's gonna help quickly strengthen those brain connections and it's gonna help you a lot. So now that you're getting your hands into great shape, and you're building that coordination between your hands, keep the ball rolling. Build your coordination even further, work your feet. Go check out my free e-guide, Know What to Practice, the three-part practice routine for people with busy lives. You can do this in 30 minutes a day, and this just rounds out the, the three main categories of practice, hand technique and coordination and listening and musicality. There's a whole bunch of great coordination exercises in there, and working those is also gonna help. Because if you're working any type of coordination, that's gonna help with your weak hand too. And so this was kind of a beginning step here to work just stuff on your pad. It's a beautiful thing to be able to practice productively on a practice pad because it's so simple. But if you wanna go further with this, work your coordination, work coordination exercises, which are in that guide, and that's gonna really force your, your weak hand, whichever hand that is, to get into better shape. And so go check that out. Um, it's a really great guide that provides you literally with months, maybe even years worth of concrete things to practice. So if you felt lost in your practicing, you haven't really known what to work on, and you just feel like you've plateaued, you, you don't really know where to go next, check that out. I guarantee you it's gonna challenge you and it's gonna end any stagnation and it's gonna give you very specific things to help you grow. Be sure to check that out. It's in the description below. Thanks for watching everyone. If you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe. Our belief here at The Non Glamour Strummer is that you can accomplish anything you want to accomplish on the drums when you put in the practice and when you're armed with the right resources. So resources today i gave you resources i gave you some specific steps to practice so you've got no excuse to not even out your hands balance out your hands plus you've got that e-guide to go check out to give you all sorts of coordination stuff so if you do that if you take action if you take action right now i promise you that if you take action and you put these things into practice you're going to grow a bunch you're going to thank yourself down the road so go do it you can do this you're more capable of success on the drums than you may have thought thanks everyone i'll see you on the next video stay non-glamorous